the 96 Hunter Lawrence right here. Cameron Camera, Team HRC. Cam, known him for a little while. We can get a close up on his face. I feel like, looks like Brock Tickle. And I've said this for many oh years. Oh my God. You remember this? Oh yeah. No, I, you look like Brock Tickle. We, a little bit less now because the beard yeah, is Yeah, it's a little outgrown right now. We rode the Harley in today, so it got a little messed up. Whoever edits this video, please, just put Tickle's face right next to his. If if and when I have it cleaned up, because Tickle's, he's a handsome man, yes. you know what I'm saying? Well, that makes you a handsome When I am cleaned up, we are pretty similar. Yeah, you're a good looking fellow. Oh, I appreciate that. And you got a good looking bike here. Hey, thank you. We work hard to keep these things running, um, keep them clean. Let's talk about Hunter's machine. So. I had the pleasure of riding Hunter's 250 at Washougal last year, as well as Jet uh, 450. So I would assume, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, we are very close to that from Washougal here on Hunter's CRF 450R. From 250 to 450? No, just, I should or, say, Jet's 450 yes, to this. Pretty, pretty spot on as far as their bikes. There's a few technical things that are different that each brother likes a little more, a little less. And we've strayed a little bit away from some of Jet settings, but we're we're pretty close. And it, it's not just Jet; we all work together to make that setting. You know. I guess a lot of people want to know too, like behind the scenes. You guys are testing in Florida. Do the brothers ever just swap bikes and ride each other's Ab bikes? Absolutely. Yeah. But that's where it gets a little Dicey. tough because yeah. we have maybe a different offset or different bar position as far as rolled back or forward. But just to get a basis, I, like a base idea, hey bud, let me go, like get on your bike, yeah. you get on mine, oh, I like this, I don't like that. And then sometimes they clash like, no, it does this. I'm like, no, it does it like this. So there Different is a little feeling. bit of variable between the two bros. So we have blind testing in the world of when I do production testing, they don't really tell you what you're testing, you have to tell them, right? So when they swap bikes, they don't exactly know the differences, or do they? We, tr we try not to plant an idea in their head. Yeah. So we give them, we made a change that they, to help them with their problem. Okay. So we make that change and they go ride it, whether it's stiffer, softer, preload spring, this or that. But they don't know that. They don't know. Got yeah, it. and then usually they're, they're pretty spot on yeah. with, with their uh, idea or how it feels. And then they'll say, what did you change? Yeah. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, it's pretty interesting. There's an interesting dynamic. I know this is not about Hunter and Jet, but like just watching them ride, the con you know, in practice, if one goes down, one's concerned, hey, you okay? Oh. Um, obviously, we saw Jet's altercation last week. What I do appreciate is Hunter didn't get involved. Right. He stood back in the back, just kind of waited. He made sure little bro's correct. okay. Yep, yep. Let him handle his own business. So I think all of that is really cool. Yep. Um, and for me, coming from a father, I think a lot of that's parenting. Yeah. So I've, I've, I've met Dazzy a couple times, great guy. So oh, he, anyway. Crushes in that X. Yeah, man. yeah, it's really good. So for me, all right, let's talk about the bike. Yeah. What does Hunter like in his engine? Do you know much about it? What is he looking for? So we we started out, we gave him a little bit of a softer package. Okay. But he grew out of it pretty quick. As soon as he started clicking laps and like, all right, give me give me the good one. I need some more Because he rode jets and he's like, all right, I'm ready. I'm ready for the full package. So we're on the full package now. Um, as far as that, like... He hasn't strayed off from that in a while. No, like once he uh, got the full juice, like so to speak, or the, you know, jet's engine. It depends engine. on... So when you, you give him the full package, yeah. from there it depends on the track. You got a slick track, we'll throw a different, let's say flywheel or okay. weighted something. And depending on how that track right. plays out, so you guys actually adjust to track conditions? Oh, absolutely, okay, yeah. yeah. If it's muddy and slick, we kind of want to slow the engine down. We don't need all that quick torque. Right, if so it's less spool up. Right, right, yeah. right. Just kind of like more of like a tractor, you know? Yeah, and that's what I noticed when I rode Jet's bike last year was how just linear it felt. It right. didn't feel like it was gnarly off the bottom, but and holy hell, man, it just started that's pulling. that's funny because compared to the works bike to a stock Honda 450, yes. that thing is like wicked fast. Yeah. The stock one. Yes. Where this bike, there's so much power, but yes. it's very linear, like you said. That's absolutely true, people. Like when you ride a stock Honda, it is very responsive. And yeah. sometimes too much so that it interrupts your corner, it screws the chassis it's, feeling it's up. It's hard to control the throttle. Like, yes. You want to go, but you crack it and you're freaking out of control. So what we call that is rear wheel connection. There right. is a lot of that within this machine, and that has to go with the engine package as well as the ECU tuning. 
Right. Now, you guys are on a GET system. Yep. Um, that's somewhat new. In the last couple of years, you guys switched to that, right? Started on the, the 250 and then just kind of working working it into the Honda Honda 450 program. It's not a full jump right into it. We got to make sure it works properly on this thing because it is the premier bike. Now, and you guys have some maps for this. Does that evolve over the time? I know you're talking about conditions, but does that you guys change maps a lot with these guys? It has. It's changed back and forth um, quite a bit, and we're always trying to be better. Yeah. And a lot of it is straight to start start maps. Okay. To help with all this power, to get off the get off the mesh, hit the tacky dirt, and still be able to drive without feathering the clutch and losing losing control. Um, so fairly smooth engine, obviously. Uh, I talked to Shane Drew a little bit about these two guys, and he said most of the engine is pretty close to the same. These guys have little differences, but what about the suspension? Is Hunter a little bit different than Jet? I'd say in the the fork, I'm pretty sure they're they're spot on. I think there's a little bit of adjustment in the shock, just as far as like sag, and he may be a little bit lower in the rear compared to Jet, and he does have shorter legs, so that might be why. Yeah. Do you know jet. the weight difference between the two riders? I feel like Jet's a little bit of a heavier guy than Hunter, no? I don't know. It's hard to tell because Jet, jet uh, holds a little more mat, like muscle mass. Yeah. And I don't want to call it Hunter thick, sorry, buddy. But he <laughs> holds a little bit more like like a little bit more fat, I would say. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I think it weighs out. Muscle's heavier than, than fat. But Absolutely. Uh, I, it would have to be within five to 10 pounds if they were different. Um, a little bit about the ergos. Um, so you, we were talking about before the camera started rolling, there is some little differences that you guys actually add to this bike. So right. uh, maybe talk about some of that. So Hunter was big into, we had a cut seat uh, up front and it was basically just to make him, to remind him to sit up front. Yep. We strayed away from that. We're on a full stock seat. We run a four mil spacer just to give him a little bit more to grip on. On each side? side? Yep, for okay. his legs. So each side has a four mil spacer. Everybody hates it when they work on my bike because they always lose it. Uh, it drops but, down. Because it falls out, yeah. yeah. But that's a little difference for him. Uh, different offset up front. Different, mm. same bar mount and pin, but uh, Hunter likes his bars rolled back a little bit more. And and they're, on a, they're on an 839 bar. 839 stock Honda bar. Yep. Is uh, Hunter uh, really picky about his clutch engagement? Absolutely. Okay. That's a big thing. Like, does he like it farther out or in, or how does he, he like it? He doesn't want it to grab right here. Okay. And he doesn't want it to be like a light switch. Okay. So where there's no progression, okay. where it's just on off on off. Hates that. I, I probably bleed bleed out my clutch probably once or twice a day. Oh really? On race day, just to get it. Get all the air bubbles out because when it when we wash the thing sets upside down and lays flat so it creates a couple little air bubbles and he notices that shit. so i yeah. noticed on his levers his lever is pointed inward but his lever is pretty far out does he have big hands small hands what is it, it? They're, they're bigger hands but it's mainly just for that feeling of where it engages and disengages okay is the big thing and shape of the lever looks pretty stock yes it is uh There's nothing special over here we are we do have a uh, arc lever up front here it's a shorty okay and we're just waiting on to waiting on them to replicate a stock lever okay and i believe we just got one in today oh but um yeah we're just waiting on that that's why they're both silvers so they match but eventually they'll both be black but he does like a stock bend even on his old 250 he ran a stock clutch perch okay stock lever the whole kit and caboodle really yeah and it was a pain in my butt um little bits and pieces here this thing is recessed so they can't hit it yeah um, what is the uh, cluster about here what is this all oh uh, that's just our map switch okay. or our uh launch? starts launch switch yeah yep. launch control and there's and these things down here they'll get him into the right rpm they'll start climbing right. so he'll activate it here before he wants to go yep and then the light will blink and it'll show his rpm as he's twisting the so correct me if i'm wrong as he's revving on the line looking over those lights start to go up and then they'll, they'll flash. If those things flash, that means he's too far in the rev, right? Now we have it to where we have a preset okay. to where he can hit it, it. Where it wherever and, and it, then that gets it to goes it. off of All that. All the day. Yep, yep. Wow, that's pretty when amazing. That's just a visual, let you know it's on, yep. everything's working. Um, 
whole bike titanium fasteners or do we go with some stock bolts? We have lots of tie, but if you look closely, we got steel on our uh, engine hanger. We got steel linkage bolts, steel axles. Pivot steel or pivot titanium? Uh, steel, pivot steel, yep. So all the, the points of contact to the engine is steel. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that's obviously for less rigidity. It goes both ways. It Do they feel it, something different as well when they go to tie? The tie is, they say, is more rigid. But then like we have a tie stem and a lot of the other guys were using aluminum stem. Like there's so many variables to it. But we've noticed as we test that they like the aluminum or the steel better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Final drive gearing, where are we at on the gearing? We're 51, 13. 1351? Yeah, 1351. Does that change during the season at all? Not much, just because they like their chassis the same every time. Okay. So when you move that uh, rear, rear axle yeah. forward or backwards, you're changing the suspension and how it feels. So we try to keep all that the same. If we do need to make a, a gearing change, we try to do it internal. Okay. With a primary or something like that. So we try to keep the outside the yep. same, so the length yep. of that. And if we do need to go bigger, we try to make sure if we send our link, we still end up in the same spot, but that gets tough. Um, a couple things. Is Hunter a 120-90 guy, or is he a 120-80 guy in the rear for the tire? I believe 120-80. We're going to look right now. We're going to dissect this right now. Let's see. Because I know a lot of guys are usually no, on a we're, we're, we're 90 because we're in the taller one right yeah yeah so there some of these guys are going to a 90 and hunter's obviously on a 90 now for that squish in the whoops when yeah, you're hitting 90. those whoops and they get square edge you got a little bit more the contact. 80's a bit uh flatter yes. yeah, yeah, yeah yeah okay we're playing a game with these guys yes or no let's go <sighs> is and you mentioned this yeah are we on a two-part question are we on a stock offset with different race Yes or no? No. Okay. Do we have a little bit of a beefier add-on style frame? It's plausible. <laughs> okay, last one, I'm trying to think of one. Um, do we, or can we, get the measurement? You're gonna say no, yeah, <laughs> I haven't finished it. <laughs> Can we? Absolutely not. Can we get the measurement from the swing arm pivot to the rear axle point? Yeah, get your measuring tape and give it a go. I would get kicked out if I did that. It's a no. Uh, it's a no, folks. Um, all right. One thing that you're most proud of on this machine. Oh. And you do, I mean, you're, I mean Gee. is this thing down in the frame every single every race? Every freaking, So we had some mud races. You've been working your ass off. So first mud race, we went through everything down to every hydraulic, everything. Apart, break, everything. everything came oh apart my God. because that mud packs into the pistons it gets everywhere and also when it packs in it gets super hot so we, all the seals are blown so we go through everything That's, how pain of an ass is it to clean the frame it already is a pain yeah. every week day in day out when yeah. you add lime and etching and rocks like san francisco just it was full of pebbles like it was almost like asphalt destroyed everything. It destroyed the swing arm. I had to put a fresh swing arm on. Oh my gosh. Because it just ate everything up. I mean, it's got to be packed inside the webbing underneath, behind the in frame. In the webbing, like, like, it was packed in here. Like, rocks destroyed the inside of the swing arm, sprockets. Even my hub got a little nick in it. And then all the webbing is just black and brown. Uh, uh, it's we a tough life in, to be a mechanic. We put in the hours yes. to make sure it all uh, looks pretty good. It looks beautiful. Like I said, on the top of this thing, it's going to be hard to find another uh, machine that looks as good as a factory Honda. And I I've been asking all these guys this. How did you get started in being a mechanic? You just rode dirt bikes and I'm like, okay, I can't race professionally. I want to be a mechanic. Is that Basically, how uh, you probably know Jeff Pastana. Yeah. He was like my mentor, my coach. So you're a NorCal guy. Yeah, NorCal guy. So okay. I lived, Frankie Latham and uh, myself lived in the same house probably 15 years apart, maybe 20 years apart at Jeff's. And when I found motocross racing wasn't really working for me, I switched over and helped him. And then he had a contract with Japan and he had four Honda riders every year. So I went down to SoCal and it was supposed to be there like three months and ended up getting a job with Joe Schmo. 
wow. the Joe Shimoda, and yeah. I, I rode that out for about seven years. And then I, that's that where I met me, this guy. That landed me at Geico. Yep, that's yep. where I met you, at Zaka Station. Yeah, yeah. You were out there. there was, uh, we were testing with Joe. Yep. Yep. And I said, damn, you look like Tickle. <laughs> And you're Dude, like, I, I hear that all the time. All the time. Yeah, Dude. yeah. So, I had a kid fooled at a bar one time. It was incredible. <laughs> Did Thank, you really? Thanks, bro. <laughs> has, has it ever helped you? Are you married? Yeah, I'm married. Oh, Two kids. Dang it. Okay, no, well. it's never helped me get any ladies. Oh, uh, man. I, I thought for sure that could have helped that's, you. That's Brock's department. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So final touches of Hunter's bike. Yeah. Looks amazing. We have, uh, we have two bikes here, Anaheim 2. We're on a triple crown. So... Exactly the same machine, down to the T, everything. The Both. bike he rides every day, sitting over there, and yep. the bike he races every day, sitting here, pretty much to the T is the same exact motorcycle. Is, is a triple crown, triple crown more of a pain in the ass for you? Absolutely. Yeah, right. I've been here since nine, and I'm not done. I was trying to get some lunch, but I'm here with you guys. I'm still, I'm but, wasting his time right here. <laughs> We're wrapping it up. All right. But, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Cameron, I appreciate it. Hunter Lawrence, 96, Anaheim 2. Um, by the time you guys see this, it'll be done and dusted, but nonetheless, very special machine. Uh, I'm very lucky to have maybe ridden a version of this last year. Unbelievable. The best factory bike I've ever ridden. I've ridden a lot of them, and I can tell you what, these guys are very, very lucky to have a machine like this and to have a mechanic like this guy right here. Hell we'll yeah. see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.